Hello there, you're watching Danski, the place to be to develop your creative skills and grow as a designer. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to create directional gradients in Adobe Illustrator. Now, when I say directional gradients, as you can see on screen, I don't mean applying a gradient to the whole design. I mean applying a gradient to certain areas, and those are areas that we can control. So I have a logo design on screen to start with now. This is all one solid color. We've got nice blue there and we could select this and from the gradient panel on the right we could click on the gradient slider and it applies that default black to white gradient across the whole thing. Now that's cool, that's not quite what we want though. We want to add a gradient up here and this tip at the top and we want to add a gradient here as well. So how we can do that? Well there's a few different ways. We're going to need to slice up our shape and if we zoom in we can quite literally do that with the knife tool. So we can select our shape and under the eraser tool, if you just left click and hold, you'll see the knife tool and you can quite literally slice through your design. And if you use the direct selection tool, you can then grab that segment and just pull it apart. So that's one way to separate that tip from the rest of your design. Another way to do it is to select the pen tool and this way is a little bit more accurate than the knife tool if you're looking to get those nice straight lines. So we could click here. In fact, it doesn't even have to be straight. It can be curved. And we're going to left click and just drag out that curve there and let go. So in outline mode, that's command or control Y. It looks something like this. In fact, we can just remove that fill we've still got our path there that we drew with the pen tool and if we go select everything and then go to the pathfinder tool on the right that's the pathfinder panel here if you haven't got that go to window at the top and down to pathfinder and from here select the bottom left option divide and it appears like nothing's really happened however if we do use the direct selection tool the same as the knife tool, we can pull this apart. Now with this tool, the main selection tool still moves this around as one piece. So what I'd recommend doing is select it with the direct selection tool by clicking in the middle, so not on any anchor points. Click in the middle, go to edit, cut, edit, paste in place. And then with the main selection tool, this is now separate from the main shape. And you can of course drag over both of these and go to objects group if you'd like to group them back together. So now we've got this in two different parts. In fact, we can also do this for the bottom part. So remember that's the knife tool. In fact, we'll do this one with the knife tool. So the pen tool, the knife tool, those are a couple of different ways of separating your shapes. So we'll just draw a line through there. Ah, that, that was pretty straight, I think, considering that was freehand. Good job. Okay. So we've now got these separate pieces. Again, that piece there is still attached, but direct selection tool, select, edit, cut, edit, paste in place. And now all three pieces of this shape are separate from one another. So that's great. Right, what we're gonna do now is I'm going to select this top part here, the tip, and from the gradient panel, select the default black to white gradient. And I can select that by clicking anywhere on the gradient slider. Now, personally, I find this quite useful using this first to get the angle of the gradient right before starting to add color. So the way I like to do this is just adjust the angle here. So you can click some of these presets from the drop down, or you can specify your own angle. And the goal here is to get either the black or the white at the bottom. So for this tutorial, I'm going to aim to get the black here. So I adjust this angle just by changing that value. Oh, there we go, minus 60, okay, perfect. So we don't want minus 50 because it's a little bit kind of one-sided. There's a bit more on the right there. So going for minus 60, that black is evenly distributed along the bottom, which is great. Cool, so I've got my gradient facing the right direction now, which is super. And with that selected, I can just double click on the black swatch and select the dark blue color. Now I've got my colors already made here as global swatches and I can just click that and it adds that. And you can see it goes from blue through to white instead of black. 
Now I've actually got a slightly lighter blue that we're going to be going through to. So if I double click on the white swatch and then select my lighter blue, you can see there it runs from the dark blue through to the lighter blue. And in fact, I think the rest of my shape might actually be the wrong shade of blue. So I'll just double, I'll double check by selecting that. There we go, it's a slightly darker shade. So there you go. So we've now got the correct shade of blue and it goes through to that lighter shade of blue here. But if I zoom in, you can see here, there's just a little bit of banding. It's just not totally smooth. So what we can do is just select this top part here, the tip, and you can see we have the dark blue on the right. We're just going to bring that up. So it starts, that gradient starts a little bit further in. And you can see there that it's kind of removed. There we go. So I just undid that. You can see you've got that banding. And there you go, it's gone. So it's kind of created a smoother transition. And how this works from the other side is if I bring the light blue to the right, you can see that it occupies more of that space. So it depends whether you want more of the lighter blue, more of the darker blue, and how seamlessly you want to blend these two colors together. So I might just bring that back a little bit. Cool, I think that's looking pretty good. And we can do the same again for here. Now we can shortcut this because it remembers that last gradient we did. We can use the eyedropper tool and select the gradient. Now, of course, it's got the wrong angle in there, but that's fine. We can just try 50. Okay, it's the opposite way around. We can reverse that gradient here by clicking this icon. Boom, and there's a really quick way to flip your gradient on its head. And again, you can see that that's a, it's just a little bit harsh. I'm going to, on this one, I'm just going to bring that light blue back and just adjust this so it's a little bit more subtle. I might even do that on this one, just so that gradient is as smooth as possible. Because if you do bring these all the way together, you can see that you get a very harsh gradient. And while that's fine, it's not quite the effect that we're looking for. We want something a little bit more subtle. And then once you've finished everything and you've added all your gradients, you can drag over everything and go to Object, Group, and it will group it all together so you can move it around as one object. And there we go. That's how to create directional gradients in Adobe Illustrator. As always, guys, please feel free to leave any questions or comments down below. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care, and I'll see you next time.